Hi everyone, it's Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery and I've got little ginger cat keeping me company today. So I've got a really special video for you today. We have finally reached our hundred thousandth subscriber on our YouTube channel. So that was always a milestone that I wanted to reach um, personally. There are other statistics if you run a YouTube channel that are more important really, um, but that was one that was important to me. It's the first one that YouTube officially recognises um, and they send you a little something um, to commemorate that occasion as well. And when that arrives, um, I will show you what it is. So to commemorate the occasion, we've got a special video for you today. And a while ago, I bought um, some gold thread, so some real 24 karat gold thread in this lovely presentation box here and if you want to see what this is see more about this you can check that in this video up here I do a little unboxing of this and I show you around and we have a little look inside at this and I thought this is a great time to get this out of the box and use it I did promise I would make something with this gold thread quite a while ago now so this is a great opportunity to do it so I'm going to get the gold thread out and we're actually going to do some stitching with it we are also going to do a very special giveaway today, um, but more about that later, so do keep watching. So when I made the video, the unboxing video, I did put a question out to you and asked what you thought I should make with it because it's quite unusual to stitch with gold thread. It needed to be something special and I wanted some ideas um, and you sent in some ideas and I thought I'd just run through those quickly just to see what we had. Um, we had, in no particular order, a crown some roses, a sun or a moon, jewellery came up a couple of times actually, bees, butterflies and dragonflies, you can't go wrong with, with those three things, Fabergé egg, that would look spectacular, unicorn, a moon gazing hair, I really like the idea of the moon gazing hair actually because I did paint one quite a while ago now, I'll see if I can find a picture of that and put that up for you. And Ginger cat, he came up a couple of times as well because he doesn't want a gold ginger cat. I don't know how you would do a gold ginger cat, but anyway, he's on the list. Um, a brooch, so more jewellery, golden eagle, sprig of wheat, initials, it would make a beautiful monogram, a halo on an icon, or um, one of the designs from the book that's actually in the box. So some really lovely ideas there, and I really did want to try and incorporate one or two of those into it but I did have some parameters of my own as well to add to those so I'll just run through those now. So one of my ideas that came to me very early on actually was it would be nice to make something that went back in the box. We've got a beautiful presentation box really and I'm going to take the thread out of the box. I think you're meant to really just leave it in there and admire it. But I thought, it, you need to use it, you need to use this thread. But I thought it would be nice to make something that I could put back in and I could leave it in the presentation box. So that really left me up there like that with a couple of choices, was to either put it back in the compartment where the gold thread sits, which doesn't give me a lot of options. That's quite small. Um, or I could fit it on top of here. Now this is the book. Take it out without dropping everything. Just about. So this is a little book all about the history of DMC and it's got some patterns in it as well, which we'll look at in a minute. And I thought that down, I could make it this size and actually fit it back in to the box on top of the book. So when I shut the lid and open it, the gold thread is still there in the embroidery. So that was something that I wanted to do quite early on, really. And the colours as well, if it's going to go back in the box, it was just really logical that I used the colours that were already in the box. So we've got this ivory and gold colour for the box and the blue backing and the blue on the front of the book. Um, actually on the front of the box as well. So my colour scheme was really already suggested to me. It all matched. It all looks really nice and classic. So those are my colours. We've got the gold thread. I'm going to do it on a blue fabric, which I'll show you in a second. And we may think about this white and how we incorporate that. I've got some really... Um, beautiful pearls somewhere so I'm going to try and dig those out we might put some pearls on it too so that informed my colour scheme for me and um, as I just mentioned there are some designs in the back of this book as well and I thought it'd be really nice to kind of do a homage to DMC and the history of DMC this was for their 270th anniversary that they launched this kit so they've got a very long history and I thought it would be nice to take something from the book that they provide with it and do that in my design as well. So I'm going to do that. I've only got eight metres of thread and I haven't got any to practice with. So I have to think about that when I make my design as well, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. 
I did just want to talk for a minute about my original idea because I played with this idea for ages and ages um, and it, it came to me quite quickly from the list of things that you sent so I'll just show you some little samples I worked here. So I was really thinking about bumblebees. We use that as our symbol of our shop as well. So I thought that'd be nice to put some bumblebees in it. And then I thought I could make a big um, honeycomb in the centre. And I could put my bumblebees around it and make a bumblebee border. And then I was thinking I could actually make a bee that I could take off and I could um, make it into a brooch and I could actually wear it. And I had this idea and I played with it for ages and I just couldn't get it to work. And I didn't try some little samples here for it and I quite like the little bees that I did here and then I thought I'm going to try it on the fabric that I'm going to use which I will talk about this fabric um, when we get to that point um, but this is smaller than the one I sampled it on and everything was coming out a bit small and I just thought oh I don't really like this design and I really really struggled with it to be honest <laughs> and mainly because I haven't tried the thread before I don't know what it will do and I was looking at some quite complex stitches with it and making things three dimensional that would come off and, and be able to wear. And it was a little bit too much too soon, really, and time constraints as well. So I thought I'll just shelve that idea for now. It's always there on the back burner for another project. But I thought this is about the thread. This is about the gold thread. It's about the history of DMC um, and these um, historical designs that they've got in the book that they use. And I thought it'd be nice just to go back to to basics really try the thread see what the thread looks like and and to use these designs that they had in the book so I'm going to do that I'm going to shelve this one for the moment and I'm going to show you the design that I've chosen from the book so this book has got some designs in the back of it here now these are from their original um, one of their original design pattern books by Teresa de Dilma and she made this encyclopedia of embroidery and they've got some of these original patterns. I thought it would be really love to, to use one of these. And I wanted something that I could use for a motif in the middle. And this one really struck a chord with me. I thought this one was beautiful. And it's actually part of a border. But I saw this design on its own. I thought, well, that's lovely. That would look really nice in the middle. So I thought, well, we'll have a go at that design. Um, this is very tiny. You can see the size of it on my hand. I thought, I can't possibly count from that. I'll, I'll go blind. And I thought, I'll just chart that onto a bigger piece of paper basically so I did that which is this one here and what happened was when I started charting it I started to see other things in it so I saw this heart shape and thought well the heart shape's a nice motif I'll make it more of a heart so I'll give it a point at the bottom here and then once I started to make these changes um, I didn't really <laughs> I did stop, obviously, because it's still recognisable, but I made quite a few more changes. So then I thought, well, one of the things mentioned in the list was to do a crown. And I thought, well, that's really nice, actually. It is the 70th um, Platinum Jubilee this year in the UK. And so I thought crowns are very of the moment. I thought it'd be really nice to get a crown in there. And I think this is some sort of basket here that the, either the flowers are coming out of the birds are feeding out. Of, I'm not sure, but I thought, well, that would be quite nice to turn into a crown. So I rubbed all of those little crosses out and I actually took one of the crowns. Let's see if we can find that. There we go. And I think I did this one or a version of this one. I started with this and again I've changed it slightly as well. So I fitted the crown in there. I made another heart shape here. I wasn't too sure what this was, if anything. So I thought well, I'd put another heart shape in there to mirror this one at the bottom and the overall shape as well. And I just made these little changes as I went about it. I changed the shapes of the birds feathers as well because once you turn a border design into a single standalone design it does look different different things start to happen and suddenly the birds feathers coming out here didn't seem right so I just curled them in a bit and kept them within this shape so I've made quite a few changes the other thing that I have done is given myself some options to simplify it I've only got eight meters of the gold thread I don't know if I've got enough to do this without working a sample um, in its entirety and measuring how much thread I use I don't know if I've got enough so you can see what I've done here is I've just drawn some outlines I've just gone over some of my pencil this is this is pencil here and I've gone over it in pen and done an outline and what I can do is stitch the outline and then I can see how I'm going with the thread and if I've got enough I can put the centers in or I could change color if I think I'm going to run out or um, I can put some other elements in here, which I mentioned earlier as well. So I've given myself some options if I think I'm not going to have enough thread 
because I really want to use the gold thread, but I don't want to sit and make two of them. It's <laughs> quite a lot of work in that. So you can see how I sort of gone about doing that design. Now, this design isn't to scale and I need to make sure I can fit it into my book. So this is the size of my book. What I actually did is I cut myself a piece of card. So I'm going to mount it around this card after I finished. So I know that that fits in the space on top of the book. So this design has to fit in there. So I need to just check that it is actually going to do that. So what I did was a bit of sampling. Now, this is something I recommend everybody does, whatever level you are. If you're doing something new or trying a new thread or making up a design, just try a little bit first. We've got a brilliant video on this. I'll put it up in the corner so that you can see that and how to sample and what's the purpose of it and how you can use that um, to help you. So I've done a little bit here. Let's just take that out of the way. You can see I've tried a little bit. Now, I wasn't going to use the actual gold thread. This is not the... 24 karat gold but I wanted to practice so all I did was to get myself just a metallic gold thread it also happens to be in DMC ones but there are other, other makes available and I just used a strand of this it's quite looks quite similar in the way that it's formed to the gold thread so I thought I'll just practice with this so that I can just try out my stitches and see what it looks like and make sure I can fit it on now I could just count this how many crosses there are and then count how many um squares there are on this fabric but I thought I'll just try a little bit see what it looks like and see what I need to think about stitching so I've used that just the metallic thread and I've actually plotted the whole of the height of that and I just carried on all the way up with my stitches I've got some gaps in here now so I know that my whole motif is actually only going to be that big it's quite a bit smaller than it is on here and you have to remember that when you're designing because you think oh I could put this in here and a jewel in there and a bead in here and then when you see the actual size of it you think oh I can't fit those things in so it's quite interesting just to do that little sample size just so you know it's going to be this big I know it's going to fit onto my board now um, and I've done my preparation and I know that I'm ready just to go ahead and stitch so I've chosen some blue fabric from my colour scheme from the box and I've actually decided as the design from the book is a counted technique, it's done in cross stitch, I'm going to use an Ada fabric. So that's designed specifically for cross stitch. It's got several threads one way and several the other and it makes a little hole and you can use the holes to count. So I'm going to use that fabric. This is some here and I'm going to use an 18 count. So it's quite small. So that's 18 holes to the inch and I've uh, got this in blue um, and I'm going to just try a little bit out. Now I've tried it with my, what's it gone? I've tried it with my normal metallic thread. Um, but I'm actually going to use the gold now on the gold thread because I need to just try a little bit before I go on so I know how many strands to use and I know what to look out for. If you um, want to use metallic thread and you have a bit of a nightmare with it, we do have a video all about that. I'll stick that up here as well. How to handle it and how to, um, how to use it in your stitching, just some little tips and tricks to help you along the way. And I'm hoping they're going to help me when I come to do this. Now, I normally try everything before, just a little bit before I do it on the camera so that you're not watching me messing about and, and trying things out. But I haven't done it with this. I'm going to actually just do this for the first time now. I've not used this thread, not even got any out of the skein until now. <laughs> I've just, just been admiring it and how beautiful it is. And I will just actually put it next to that one so that's the sort of gold color you can see how different the colors are this is quite green compared to this one and the weight is, is amazing this one's at least twice as heavy as this one so it really does feel different without even getting it out of the skein so let's get a little bit out oh, that tangle around the frame get rid of that so let's get some out and have a little go with it and just see what it does now I'm hoping don't even know this but it will do the pull through method that most of these skeins have so they're wrapped in a figure of eight you pull one end and it just comes undone um nicely to the length that you want so i'm going to hoping it's it's uh, going to do that now it's usually at the bottom end if i just pull that ah okay so those are the ends i've actually got them a little bit of it's like wax on the end to hold the ends of the thread together so it's normally the one let's see where they are coming out Ooh, I don't know which one it is. It's normally the one that's inside the middle of the skein. They both look like they're inside the middle. So I'm just going to pull one really gently. If I feel some resistance, it's not the right one. Let's 
see that coming. It is coming through. Right, so it is wrapped in a figure of eight. That is the pull through method. So just very gently pulled on on one of them and it happens to be the right one. If you pull on it and it just feels like, oh, it's starting to tangle, stop and pull the other one, really. And it comes out in one full length of the skein. So it's that long. So I'm going to cut it that length. I know from normal metallic threads, cut them short. <laughs> Don't use long lengths because they're a nightmare. So I'm going to use a nice short length. So that's fingertip to the inside of my elbow. But if you use that method of pulling through, that will give you the right amount as well. So I'm going to cut that at that bend there. So those are my ends. So I do know now which is the end to pull because that one's got the little wax end on it. So I'm just going to put that down there. I'm going to cut that off. Now it's got how many strands? Let's separate those out. So one, two, three, four. It's got six strands like a normal skein of, of cotton. I'm just going to pull one of them out and try one of them because I think I'm only going to need one. So the way to do this is to pull straight up so it doesn't get in a tangle. I'm just being super careful with this red normal. I just pull it and throw it on the table. <laughs> but I'm like, it's gold. I've got to be really careful with it. So I've got one strand. I'm going to use a tapestry needle. So I'm stitching through an ada, which has got holes in it. I don't want a sharp point on my needle. I want um, a blunt end so it will go through the holes and not pick up the strands. So I've got some tapestry needles here. They're exactly the same as embroideries. They've got that long thin eye for the thread, but just a blunt end so you don't poke the, the fabric where you don't want to. These are 26, size 26, and these are 24. I think I am going to try... I'm going to try a 26 to start with. And if it feels like it's um, pulling on the thread and it's stripping it, then I will change to a bigger size and to the 24. So I've just got this one strand, put a knot in the end, and I'm just going to do a few stitches, nothing in particular. Just want to see what that feels like. I'll do some little cross stitches as we're going to do that later. Now I can hear it going through the fabric. Yeah, I can hear it, which is never a great thing. But it feels okay at the moment. And what can happen with these threads is that where it goes through the eye of the needle, that is where it can wear. I can see it already kinking and doing that, so I'm going to pull it down as far as I can. I'm also going to use a laying tool, so that's one of these here, and that just helped me to control the thread down and hopefully reduce the wear, the wear on it. So I can just catch my thread in that. And I don't know if you can hear that on the camera. So I think it's not going to be the easiest thread to use. So we're definitely not going to go more than one strand on this, I think. This is quite a fine aid of fabric, so it doesn't need to be too thick, this thread. And you can tell if you've got too much thread, because it will start to distort the fabric. You've got too much thread in the whole size. So it's going to be a very delicate design, this. Just going to do one more. Then I'll have a look at the state of the thread. Okay, so it's easy with a laying tool, definitely. I can hear it coming through the fabric. If you hear that too much, swap up to a bigger size needle. The needle will make the hole and the thread will pass through the hole rather than passing through through the fabric itself and that, that will damage the thread. So I've tried a little bit. So I think what we'll do is we'll get our big piece framed up and we'll just start. <laughs> and we'll see what happens and then I'll show you how to start that design. So I've got my fabric ready to go and I'm going to talk about my setup in a minute but I just want to show you what um, we are giving away in this video today because it's very exciting. So this is my box here that I've just shown you. 
I have another one. <laughs> I've got two. So this one is mine. Um, and you can get your hands on this one. Brand spanking new, never opened, 24 karat gold thread and book and presentation pack and everything that goes in that. So if you fancy your chances at getting a hold of one of these very, very special, special threads and a special presentation packs, do keep watching because I'm going to tell you how you can join in very shortly. So I just want to show you through my setup I've got here. So I've got my Ada fabric pinned to um, stretcher bar frames. I've just allowed myself a couple of inches extra all the way around the size of that box so that I can finish it off um, and I can mount it properly later. I've got it fixed in two table clamps um, so I can hold it nice and steady um, and use both of my hands. You only normally need one table clamp, um, but because we're filming under the camera, it does wobble a bit. So to try and reduce the wobble, we've got two, but one is good. And I have got my scissors ready, and I have got my malaw. Where have I put that? Da, 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 and I've got my gold thread here. So we're going to start stitching now. I've just done a couple of things for preparation before I start. It's definitely worth doing all the preparation. Take the time to do this because it will make it much better down the line. And you can see here that I've put some stitching right across my fabric. So I'll just show you this first. So I've just marked the centre on my design and that's this little red square here. So that's exactly the same number of stitches above as there are below. And um, because it's a symmetrical design, that's the centre side to side as well. And I've marked that on there and I just put little arrows to show where that line is. So I know where the centre of the design is. We're going to start stitching in the centre. If you're more experienced at this, you can count out and count up and start from the corner, but that's um, quite dangerous thing <laughs> to do. It's much, much better to start in the centre. So you need to find your centre first. So do that and mark it on your design, your pattern. If you buy a pattern, that will be marked on for you. And then I've done the same on the fabric. Now you might see some people on videos finding the centre by folding their fabric in half. They fold it and they crease it and they fold it and they crease it and they've greatly got the centre. They've also got two massive creases in the fabric. And anybody who watches my videos will know I'm not a fan of creased fabric. Um, iron it, just iron it, there's no excuse not to iron it. No excuse to have any creases in your fabric. So I've doing it, um, done it this way instead. And I've just measured it and halved it and found the centre point. And I put a tacking or a basting stitch in um both ways so I found that centre of my fabric and I know if I work from there it will fit in the middle of my fabric and then I don't have any problems when I come to mount it. So I've got the centre on my design, I've got the centre on my fabric and I'm ready to do some stitching. So I'm just going to quickly talk about how I'm going to stitch this. Um, most of this is in cross stitch here. We've got some back stitch as well and I'm hoping that I can add some of these other embellishments on with some other um, nice materials later. I'll see what I can find and what it looks like. So I'm going to just show you this element here. So you can do this design in um, several different ways depending on whether you're left brain or right brain really how you look at this. So you might either see it as there's two cross stitches um, so there's look at this bit here. So there's one, three spaces across stitch, three spaces across stitch, and you might want to work in rows and count it like that. I prefer, especially with a more open design, to work the actual element of the design. So I'm going to work this crown as one design. I can sort of see what it's meant to be, and that will help me make sure I get my stitches in the right place. If you just count stitches and holes, you can go a bit <laughs> a bit mad. Um, and you can easily lose your way and I just find it easy to visually look at the element and stitch that element but you can choose whichever way you want to do it. So I'm going to show you this crown, I'm going to do some cross stitches, I'm going to do some back stitches and then we're going to see what that looks like. So I threaded up one of the strands of the gold in um, the number 26. I'm going to try that for a bit, see what I like, whether I like that or not. I'll put a knot in there. I'm going to do a waist knot and I'll show you that. So I'm just going to start stitching right under this centre point here. This is right in the middle. I'm going to do these cross stitches here. And I'm just going to work my way down here and round the shape. So I'm going to put that knot on the top. That will get cut off. So underneath the thread comes up here. And then we're going to stitch over it as we go. Now I'm going to have to just stop and look at the chart, make sure I know what I'm doing. So there's one right under the centre here. So that's the centre centre one. And there's right under there. And we can take these stitches out as we go. So I'm just going to start there. What I'm actually going to do is just cut that thread. And you can just pull them back as you get to them. Now cross stitch is made of two elements first stitch, second stitch. And what you should really do with cross stitch, um, probably the only thing that I would say everybody agrees on with cross stitch, is that the bottom stitch should always go the same way 
and the top stitch should always go the same way and you should have them so the first stitch goes left to right and that's always the first stitch on the bottom the second stitch goes over the top goes from bottom right to top left and you should always be that way around if you swap them around strange things happen with the light and and it looks a bit weird and, and a bit uneven so try and just keep them methodical in that the bottom stitch is always going the same way it's the top so i'm going to do it that way so there's my first stitch now it's actually a half cross stitch let me just get that out of the way see actually um, a half cross stitch you might see that in some cross stitch patterns it might just have one line that's half cross that's all you do and i'm actually going to do the whole stitch now sometimes you can work rows of them if you've got a block of cross stitches you can go one way and come back um, and then sometimes with a design like this you'll need to do them separately so i'm going to do the whole cross so there's my first cross and then underneath that one there's one to either side of that a gap in the middle so there's my bottom one bottom left to top right that's the first stitch they're going the same way and i'm going to put the second one over the top just nice and gentle on the tension I might just use the laying tool bottom left top right second stitch over the top now this is quite springy i'm noticing already so tension's going to be a little bit harder so just pull it a little bit more and when you let go it's kind of springing back a bit so it's just a case of being aware of that you can see how sort of carefully I'm handling it. Don't fight your threads and your materials. Let them let them work with you. Pay attention to what I'm doing. So we've got a little block of four like that. So bottom left, top right. You have to put that one in over the top, bottom right, top left. So that one's always going over the top. Yeah, it's just springing up. So I just need to hold it down with that. A law. If you haven't got a laying tool, you can use a big tapestry needle or something like that so first four stitches in it's going okay you can not um doesn't feel like it's it's um splitting or anything like that on the fabric but it is just a bit springy now i can come straight down so i've got one two three four stitches vertically i'm going to put those stitches in straight down do keep an eye on the pattern <laughs> Especially a symmetrical one. So bottom left, top right, bottom right, top left. Just working each individual cross stitch. And you can see how I'm coming up away from that previous one. So I'm not coming up in that hole. That's already got the stitch in it. And I don't really want to bring my needle up because that pushes up through the stitch that's already there. So it's better to come up away from it into open, open territory. And then go down into the hole that's already got some thread in it. Having a little stretch. So that's one, two, three, four stitches down. Okay, so we've done this four, one, two, three, four, and we've gone one, one, two, three, four stitches down. So you've got to keep a really accurate um, plan of where you're going. You can see with some of this design that I've put them in, in darker colour. I've done it in a pen so I can clearly see the shape and see where I'm going just to give myself a bit of a guidance because this is only one colour, we're not changing colour here. So I'm just going to work my way around and do a few more um, bits of that um, crown, do more cross stitches in that and then I'll show you the back stitch. Now I've just been doing a few cross stitches and I haven't actually got that far and I just wanted to show you the state of this thread. <laughs> it's not very good and you can just see it's all separating. It's actually kind of a two ply twist in that I guess and it's falling apart and I can't continue with that so I'm going to 
finish that, pull that through to the back. I'm going to weave it under some stitches on the back, make sure it's securely finished off. I'm going to get myself another thread and I'm going to go to the larger size needle and hope that that just makes my thread last a bit longer because otherwise I'm going to be throwing half of it away. So um, I'm just going to do that now because that isn't going to work anymore and start a new thread. So I've done the little crosses in the crown um, and it did take a little bit of practice just to get used to using them. I did swap up to the larger needle, definitely better, and the laying tool. And when you, um, as with anything, when you practice, you just get used to handling and how much to pull it and, and what to listen out for. So um, it did get better, has to be said. <laughs> um, and the other thing I just want to mention is if you're going to do something on an Ada fabric, put something light underneath because that comes through the holes and you can see the holes easier. So I happen to have that on here. So that was very helpful as well. So I'm going to show you the back stitch that goes around the bottom. But just before we do that, we are going to do the giveaway to see if you can get your hands on one of these beautiful um, skeins of thread. So we do want to say um, a big thank you to all of our 100,000 subscribers um, for supporting this channel and making it what it is. We make these videos for you, so we're really appreciative that you're enjoying them and you're supporting them. So both Jonathan and I, thank you very much for that. Um, so let's tell you what you have to do to get your hands on this really, really special box. So all you have to do, dead easy, is to write a comment below this video and just include the numbers 24 so just like it appears on the screen here if you want to have a go at getting your hands on our 24 carat gold thread so you can just put 24 in or you can um, get imaginative as you always do because we do love reading those comments so that's all you've got to do is just um, comment underneath this video including the numbers 24 and then we will draw out a um, a winner at random so today the date is Friday the 5th of August 2022 going to give you a little bit longer to do this one so we're going to do the draw for this on Wednesday the 17th of August 2022 so once we have drawn the winner, we will let you know. So we will reply to your comment underneath this video. We won't do it until that date that I mentioned. Um, I just want to mention now, if you get anything before then that asks you to contact a WhatsApp number or anything like that, please ignore it. And um, we did get um, a bit spammed last time we did this. So we do apologise for that. Jonathan was on top of it and managed to get rid of most of them. But I will contact you personally, um, reply to your comment on that date. And we will never ask you to ring a random number. And I will tell you how to get in touch with me through my website so that you know that is me so do make sure you, you check your comments we'll put it on social media as well so you don't miss out um because if you don't get in touch with me and tell me where you are i can't send it to you and that would be that would be a bit sad and i'll have to draw it again so do make sure you check your comments everybody um and really good luck so we've done our cross stitch and I want to show you this back stitch because these two stitches go well together. And if you ever do a cross stitch kit, you'll probably get both of these stitches together. So I'm just going to show you on here what we're doing. So we're just going to go around the bottom of the crown here in a back stitch, like so around these cross stitches. So I've got a new thread for this because um, I want to get all the way around in one go really. I'm going to do a back stitch so we come up ahead of ourselves and we come back each time we do back stitch. So I've come up ahead here and I'm going to go down into that hole there. Just keeping an eye on my pattern and we're going to go around the shape. So coming up in that hole. So it's ahead of myself now so you've got to sort of look where you're going. So you can come up ahead and go back down and that's going to go back down into that hole that's got that previous stitch in it. And as I do a few, you'll see what's happening there. So ahead of myself, I'm going back. There's my back stitch around the shape. And I'm learning now with this thread, I actually have to pull it too tightly. It's quite strong. So I'm just being nice and gentle on my tension. It does pop up a little bit, so I'm just making sure that's a nice even tension all the way around. And I'll come along the bottom. You'll be able to see me doing that stitch more clearly. Up ahead back down that hole from the previous stitch and that makes a row of stitching so it just means you can define your shapes a little bit more if you don't just want to rely on the cross stitches you want to line a stitching this is a really good way of doing it 
okay on the last few stitches I've gone all the way around the end and along the bottom as well one piece is going to just about get round I think there it is so last one should join up with that first one so very simple stitch but really effective if you just want an outline around your cross stitch okay so first little bit done i think that gold thread actually looks really stunning it's really lovely and um, it does behave like a metallic thread so do check out that video on metallic threads just to learn the little tips about how to use these threads if you want to add a bit of sparkle to your work um do remember to check out the video um as well on what you could win so you can check that out up here um that's a really good um look inside the box and um, to see see what's in there and see what you can win if you've enjoyed this video do give it a thumbs up um, more people will get to see it um and then meanwhile i've got some more stitching to do i'm going to finish my design um so i will show you that in the next video